Okay, my name is Steve, and this is Christianity Out Loud. Uh, thank you for watching, thank you for tuning in, thank you for listening, uh, wherever you may be doing that, uh, be it on YouTube, be it on Rumble, be it on Locals, either of those, uh, welcome and thank you indeed, thank you again. Um, if you like uh, what I have to say, uh, if you like what I'm trying to do, provide a Christian perspective on things, all things social, political, cultural, you name it. Uh, trying to keep a Christian perspective there. Um, if you like what I'm trying to do, uh, it'd be great if you um, hit the subscribe button either on YouTube or Rumble. Um, like and share the videos. That would be that would be wonderful. I greatly appreciate that. Um, well, it's a bit of a, uh, I'll say, sad day for me here. Um, I actually should be, uh, before I go on, you notice there it is. Notice this little decoration hanging up behind me here. I believe my mother-in-law actually made that. Uh, she's a very clever uh, woodworker, along with my father-in-law actually, both very clever woodworker. Um, I think that was done on a scroll saw, but I'm sure I'll be corrected if that was um, if that's not correct. Anyway. Where was I? So yeah, thank you to, to her and them for the for the decoration. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, uh, I'll say a sad day. Uh, I actually should be should be at the first day uh, of the Ashes cricket test match between Australia and England, played at the Gabba here in South Brisbane. I should be there, uh, but I'm not. I'm, I'm home recording this. Um, my parents live just over the border into New South Wales and uh, despite being you know, fully vaccinated apparently they are still too dangerous uh, to come over the border yet so unfortunately we had to uh, leave those tickets um, so there was that uh, I actually saw a great meme uh, before I started recording this um, today, uh, it said, uh, unvaccinated people can enter venues before an 80% vaccination rate. Unvaccinated people can't enter venues after 80% vaccination rate. Science. And I just thought, yeah, I thought that that summed up basically the state of the world. Uh, apparently, um, it's some European countries, it's the unvaccinated people, the unvaccinated people are being locked out of society. I always, um, when things like this occur and policies like this are put in place, I just wonder if the people doing the policy making have read a history book, you know, going back looking throughout history as soon as a group of piece of people uh, is isolated, ostracized for any reason, labeled unclean and diseased and a danger to the rest of society. Has that ever ended well? Because uh, the same sort of remarks were made about a group of people in a certain European country leading up to the Second World War. And we know how that ended. So, anyway. Unfortunately, uh, the conversation still 100%, 100%, mostly uh, revolves around COVID, particularly here in Queensland. Uh, if it's not raining of biblical proportions, which it did uh, last week, uh, the conversation is on. So the conversation is either on the weather or COVID, as, as it seems. Um, you know, the, the idea of vaccination and personal relationships with people is something that's come up, uh, well, at least twice, really notably, for me and my family in the last little while. Um, and I'll just preface this in saying whether we're vaccinated or not, it's actually our business and nobody else's business and I shouldn't be forced 
to do anything. Uh, but the, the, the theme has been, well, the theme, twice it's been mentioned that uh, these other people went and got vaccinated because it's the socially responsible thing to do. And that's something I'm still struggling to reconcile with. Surely anybody goes and gets medical treatment for themselves. Surely. That's the primary reason for going to get medical treatment. It's a circular argument that goes nowhere. People will tell me, yeah, you must go and get the vaccine. And I will go, okay, why? To protect yourself and others who are vulnerable. I go, great. Why don't people who are vulnerable go and get the treatment they need? They did. Okay, great. So why do you need me to go and get it? Because if you're fully vaccinated, you can still contract and pass on COVID. Ah, so the vaccine doesn't work as well as it was first suggested? Well, the vaccine works great. Okay. So if the vulnerable people, vulnerable people have been vaccinated, why do you need me to go and do anything? Because you need to protect others. And around and around and around it goes. And again, my medical status well, I thought my medical status and all of my medical treatments and medical history was private. Apparently, everybody needs to know that. Uh, so, uh, the response of Christians. I mean, that's what this channel is about, looking at what Christians should do, looking at the Christian perspective of all sorts of things, as I mentioned earlier. And the response of Christians I've found has been really multifaceted. Uh, and many people have tried to tell me that this is just a grey area, Steve. It's a grey area. For me, it's not a grey area, and I'll tell you why. One, I'm not a doctor. Okay? And neither are most of the people I talk to about most things. There's a lot of armchair experts, a heck of a lot of armchair experts. People who've got all of a sudden medical experts and things because they, they read it on a website or a newspaper or something like that. A lot of people tell him just sprouting statistics and I go, well, if that's great, you're not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. We all, that, that's fine. Tell me I'm not a doctor, but neither are you. Don't tell me these sorts of things like you have a greater understanding. Okay. Um, what they, they argue numbers and statistics. I'm interested really in two numbers. I'm interested in the number of cases and the number of deaths. That's what interests me. Uh, which in Queensland is about 2,200. There are about cases with seven deaths. That is not a real high percentage for mortality. Setting aside the emotion and the, the sadness that seven people died, granted. But that number, if we're looking at it purely numbers, seven out of well over 2,000, is not a high uh, percentage. But I digress, I don't want to talk numbers. I, I have no interest in talking numbers. To me, it is simple. Should the church, corporate church, Christians, should we be taking orders from a secular government? Should we be taking orders from a secular government. Now think about that for a minute. Before you jump to the various examples of, you know, Scripture says obey authority, and I'll, I'll touch on that in a minute. But when we were under the harshest lockdown, the harshest, when we were under the um, initial lockdown, shall we say, you know, a year and a half ago, nearly two years ago, Churches had to close. Churches were not allowed to operate. Costco remained open. Now, where was the objection to that? 
what made a church more quote unquote dangerous than a large retail uh, shop, whatever you call Costco. I'm sure whether it falls under retail or um, groceries, it sells everything. So a large shop, leave it at that. How come a church was considered more dangerous? Why did a church need to close? You know, I, throughout all of this, I've been looking, I still am looking for good Christian leadership. Now, I had an argument the other day. It wasn't really an argument. We were both coming at it from, we were both coming at the same conclusion from different perspectives. So, excuse me, it wasn't actually an argument. But with, with a, with a, family member, and it was around the mandating of vaccination. And I was coming at it from a Christian perspective that government should mandate, and as Christians we should stand up and say, no, this other person was coming at it from a point of, no, we can't argue that from a Christian perspective, you can argue it politically. And I get that. I get that. Yes, it's a political argument, but I think, I still think that from a Christian perspective, we can still approach or still argue that these sorts of mandates should not be put in place. I mean, who is the government to say, going back a year and a half, who is the government to say, arbitrarily, you are an essential worker, but you are not. I'm pretty sure that the small business owner, right, considers what they do essential for their mortgage, their livelihood, their staff. And again, they're forced to close, but someone like, again, Costco, a physical shop, but just a big physical shop, remains open, and somewhere like Amazon thrives because people aren't allowed to go, or people aren't allowed to leave their homes to start with. But then also, the small shop is forced to close under the guise of public safety. Yeah, I've quoted before when scripture tells us, <coughs> excuse me, that we need to obey authority. Yep, that is indeed written there. However, I've also explained the context of that and how that is referring to good government. That's what it is referring to, okay? If government implemented a law, say, that all red-haired people, red-haired people, now I can say that, because as you can tell, there's less of it there and more of it there these days, but if all red-haired people are to be imprisoned, are Christians going to obey that? That's a law set down by government. It's a law set down by authority. You must obey it. That's what the Bible tells you. So does that mean someone from my church is going to come around and point out to the authorities that I'm a red-haired person, therefore I should be arrested? What we're talking about is government edicts that churches and a lot of Christians are just going, well, yes, government. I will now bow to you, not to Jesus. I'm not saying don't go get a vaccine. You want it, go get it. Vaccines are wonderful, they're great, they're marvels of modern medicine. They really are. You want it, go get it. I'm happy for you. Don't tell me because I don't need to know. I don't want to know. Okay? But just because something is law, something is set down by a secular government, does that automatically mean it must be obeyed? 
Go read Daniel. He asked permission in chapter 1 to not eat the food. Right? Go and read it. Go and read Daniel. I'm pretty sure it's uh, chapter 6. He's implemented by the government, by the king. You will only bow down and pray to me. He doesn't do it. He does not do it. He gets thrown into the lion's den for his trouble. He comes out protected. I mean, what we have at the moment is a situation where society is being divided. Are we as Christians going to throw fuel on that by jumping on all these sorts of bandwagons? Oh, yes. You should be mandated that you have a medical procedure because it's the socially responsible thing to do. Back to the circular conversation. Yeah, I'll leave you with this. This is scripture from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 to 32. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamour and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. That's pretty clear. I'm no expert, right? I'm no medical expert. I'm no statistical expert. I'm not an expert in much. I'm not a self-deprecating statement. That's just the, the fact, right? I give you my guarantee here and you can hold me to this. Hold me to it, okay? I will never, I will never, right? Never ask anyone I meet for the first time or a, f a friend I've known for, for 20 years, I will never ask them their vaccination status or to see a vaccine passport before I hang out with them. Never. It doesn't matter to me. It does not matter to me. That changes nothing for me. Okay? I'm, I, will, I will never do it. The moment I start doing that, Someone needs to remind me of what I've said here. Pull me aside and go, no, 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 no. That's not what you do. Okay? I'll give you my guarantee. As a truck drives past, give you my guarantee. So again, I will never, ever ask anyone of their vaccination status regardless. Someone I knew I met for the first time, Great, I'll sit down, have a meal, I'll break bread with you, that's fine. The friend I've known for 20 years, my, my, my door is open, always has been, always will be, that's it. No, no standard, no expectation, no nothing. You do what's right for you, I'll be here, okay? Uh, next week will be the last weekly word before I take a few weeks off to have Christmas and camping and all of that with uh, friends and family. So, until next week, God bless. <laughs>